Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you the What's In My Soccer Bag video for the month of October 2015. Now for those that are unfamiliar with this series, this is where I go through and pick out the very best products that I found myself using throughout the previous month by filling up a soccer bag. So this includes everything from apparel, equipment, as well as footwear. These aren't necessarily all items that I wore at the same time, but items that I thought were worthy of being highlighted. Now of course, all of the stuff you see in today's video you can purchase for yourself by checking out the what's in my soccer bag page on my website which will be the very first link down below in the description of this video if you click that link it'll take you to a page where you'll find buy it now links for all of the items along with exclusive sr4u coupon codes where you'll be able to pick those items up below their normal retail prices so again if you see something in today's video that you're interested in purchasing for yourself First link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get into the what's in my soccer bag video for the month of October 2015. All right, so for the month of October, I ended up sticking with the same duffel bag as the last few months. This is the large size of the Under Armour Undeniable duffel bag. It has a retail price of $55 US, and it's just all you would want in a duffel bag. It's made from a nice kind of high quality durable material that's fairly water resistant. It's got really solid zippers. It's got all the straps you could want, big center compartment, pockets on the sides as well as on the front. And again, it just does what a duffel bag needs to do. No complaints there whatsoever. So open it up and take a look at what's on the inside because that's obviously what everybody is here to see. So the first item is one that you guys have seen obviously in the What's In My Bag series before. These are the Storelli Body Shield Slider Shorts. They have a retail price of $54 US and to keep things short and sweet, they are soccer specific compression shorts. They do the compression part really well, but also have uh, pour on foam padding down the side of either leg, molds to the side of your leg really nicely so there's no visible extra bulk, but a lot of extra protection from bumps against other players, as well as sliding on the side of your leg, of course. So if you're looking for some really good soccer specific um, compression shorts, these are some of the best of the best in my opinion. So throw those right over there and move on to the next thing, which of course is a training shirt. Now this is the Puma Borussia Dortmund uh, training jersey, which I thought was really, really cool looking. Dortmund always has good looking kits and good looking training stuff. This one is no different. It's obviously their signature yellow and black color scheme, mostly yellow as you can see. It's made from a nice lightweight kind of mesh material. It's what they call their cool cell material. It's got the Borussia Dortmund crest right there with the Avonix sponsor in pink right underneath. And then you can see it has this cool kind of split design on the one side of the chest where it's black instead of yellow has these kind of diagonal stripes in like a shiny rubberized material. Then you have the Puma branding there on either shoulder as well. Black down both shoulders and on the back, it also has the Avonix sponsor one more time along with uh, the Puma logo. And you can actually see it says Borussia Dortmund closer to the bottom. So really, really cool jersey, very comfortable to wear. It has a retail price of $55 US. So it's not super cheap, but it's really good quality. Of course, it is authentic licensed product. And I think it looks good enough that if you wanted to wear it casually, you absolutely could. Next, we of course have a pair of training shorts and these are really, really nice shorts. I kind of didn't know what to expect when I actually ordered them, but the final product is far better than I was expecting. Now they are pricey. They are the Nike Strike Stretch Longer Woven Shorts. Very long name. Um, retail price is $50 US. So like I said, they are relatively expensive, but they're made from this super thin, slightly elasticated material that just feels really good. You can see it has the laser etched holes right there on the side, on the kind of the front slash sides of the leg, kind of right there in the middle. And it provides some nice ventilation that you wouldn't otherwise have. The material, like I said, is so nice and lightweight, very stretchy. They're slightly longer than usual, which I personally don't mind. They have the little splits at the end, which I really, really like. It has this kind of tape stripe that we've seen before from Nike. It's actually a signature of their new apparel line, which we'll see a lot of in today's video. The tape stripe on this colorway is orange, while the, the actual shorts themselves are kind of like a dark gray color. The band is black in color, as you guys can see. And on the back, it's left pretty much completely blank aside from the Nike swoosh right there at the very back of the band. So overall, really, really nice shorts. $50 is a hefty price tag, but again, the quality is absolutely fantastic with those things. Now, again, it is October, so the weather is going to be a little bit cooler. And for those cooler days, I actually um, brought out this guy right here. This is actually another piece of equipment that I was really surprised with. 
Um, it's also part of Nike's new soccer lineup. This is what they call their Nike H Adapt Knit Jacket. It retails for $100 US. So again, not super cheap, but really, really good as far as soccer specific kind of sweater jackets are concerned. What's nice about this is it has more of a fitted feel, which is kind of what you want. You don't want a big baggy piece of apparel on you while you're running around. It just doesn't feel right. Um, it kind of feels like it's getting in the way. This doesn't have that. It's nice and fitted, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's restrictive. The waistband isn't too tight, so it never feels like it's riding up, which a lot of jackets can do. Um, and it's got nice ventilation here around the armpit area. Um, and also really, really good mobility. They made sure that you can move your arms around freely in pretty much all directions without the actual jacket moving around in the middle of you. So really, really good. Uh, it's a dry fit material, but it's fairly warm. It looks to be like a thicker mesh um, and it really does keep you nice and warm. I was surprised. It's obviously a zip up jacket, so it zips straight up down the middle. It has kind of a shorter collar, which I really like as well, because you can zip to the top and it's not uncomfortable or anything like that, but you still get that little bit of coverage on your neck. It's got that same tape stripe like you saw in the shorts going down the side of the arm, which is really cool. This is a black on black color. You can get it in other colors as well. And on the back, it's left pretty much completely blank as you guys can see. So for $100, if you're looking for a really nice jacket for colder weather playing, soccer specific specific jacket, I should say. That's a really good one to pick up. And again, it looks the part. You can wear it casually as well. So it's kind of a good investment if you don't necessarily, or you can't necessarily um, justify paying that much for a jacket that you're gonna wear specifically for training. Next, we of course have a pair of pants. This is also part of the new Nike soccer lineup. And this is, in my opinion, the most impressive of their new stuff. These are the uh, Nike Strike Stretch Tech Pants. They retail for $80 US, so they are very expensive as far as training pants go. Obviously, they're soccer specific, so they taper at the bottom. What's different about these is the material itself. The material is very thin and it's very stretchy, which is really nice. Um, I really like how these things feel. They have a tighter fit as you would expect. They taper at the bottom, but as you guys can see, they don't actually have any zippers or anything like that. Um, which is really nice. It's elasticated instead. So technically, if you did have your shoes on and you wanted to take the pants off, you would kind of have to take your shoes off just because they're very, very tight around the ankle and calf area. Uh, but it's elasticated, so it's not uncomfortable. What I really like about the no zipper thing is I always find that the zippers tend to kind of eat away at my heel. You take, you take a ball to the side of the ankle um, where the zipper is and it hits you in just the right way where you get that little painful spot um, because of the actual zipper. This does not have that. And like I said, it just fits really, really tight at the bottom. So you don't have any extra bulk whatsoever. Um, so it's almost like you're not wearing pants at all in terms of how they feel when you're actually playing in them. They have that nice tape stripe design going down the side, kind of starting at the waistband and then going to about your knee. It is a dry fit material. It does have the pockets on either side with the zippers as well. And it's got pretty much the same, elast the same elasticated waistband with the drawstring that, that you're gonna find on the actual shorts uh, that I just showed. So really, really nice soccer pants. Uh, $80, again, very pricey, but another one of those pieces of apparel that you can actually wear casually if you really wanted to. Now, uh, again, because it was a little bit colder and there were some rainy days, I had to get a windbreaker slash rain jacket. So I picked this guy right here. Really, really like how this looks. This is the Adidas Juventus windbreaker. It just dropped in price. It used to be around $100 US, but it recently went down to about 76. So it's pricey, but it's not too bad. Of course, it is official licensed product. Um, what I pick, the reason why I picked this is mainly for the pattern. I thought it was really cool. It's got this kind of interesting gray, white, and black camo at that I'm always a sucker for camo, so I think that this looks really, really cool. I know everyone's gonna have their opinion on it. Of course, it is Juve branded, so you're gonna have the Juventus crest on the one side, the embroidered Adidas crest on the other, and on the one shoulder, the left arm, I should say, you can see that it does say Bianco Neri, uh, which uh, basically stands for black and white, the colors of uh, Juventus. You've probably heard that particular Italian saying before. Or, or, I don't know if it's a saying or it's just the words in black and white in Italian. I, I know it's all tied in with Juventus. I don't want to get into that. I kind of sound a little dumb right now, but I'm going to keep going. Um, anyways, uh, it zips up. Obviously, it's just a regular windbreaker jacket. This is not as fit as, as I, I expected it to be. It's a little bit bigger. I got a size large, which is what I normally wear, uh, but it ended up being a little bit bigger than I was anticipating. So if you want it to be a little more fitted, maybe go a half size smaller than you normally would. It does have the built-in hood as well, um, so you can cover up your head if you so choose. And on the back, it's left, for the most part, pretty much completely blank, just that camo pattern continues on. So again, $76, 
pretty decent jacket and of course you can get something similar not necessarily this exact pattern but the same jacket with a different pattern and color scheme for most of the current adidas clubs next we're going to move on to socks uh, the first pair of training socks that i actually really enjoyed wearing this month were these guys right here these are the uh, psg training socks so um, they're pretty much the standard nike stadium crew socks um, but obviously psg color so for whatever reason they just changed the name they retail for uh, $14 US, so not super cheap, but not super expensive either. And they're just really good high quality training socks. They're nice and fitted. They've got good padding at the base of the foot. Uh, they fit really nicely. They're comfortable to wear, of course. Anatomically right and left uh, fitted. Not necessarily fitted, but more so labeled. The padding is kind of cha does change depending on the left and right foot. Um, and it's a nice dry fit material, so you can't really go wrong. For training, in my opinion, I just like to wear crew socks as opposed to ankle socks. So if you're looking for some good quality, comfortable socks to wear, definitely cannot go wrong with these. Plus the color scheme with the PSG colors, the navy blue, white, and red, I think just looks really, really cool on this particular sock. Next, we of course have some true socks. These guys retail for $40 US. Most of you guys probably know about them already. Very expensive for a pair of socks, but truly one of the only products that you can buy that's actually gonna make a big difference in terms of how your shoes will actually fit and feel on your feet. The non-stop grip, not the non-stop grip, I'm thinking Adidas. The non-slip application that you're gonna find on the actual inside and outside of the sock at the bottom of your foot does a good job of gripping your foot as well as gripping the inside of the shoe, kind of eliminating excess slippage that you would normally have with a regular pair of socks. And like I said, the result is a very, very responsive sensation when you wear these things inside your soccer shoes or really any shoe for that matter. So if you haven't tried True Socks before and you've been curious about them, they're definitely uh, a very good product that actually does make a bigger difference than you might expect. Again, that's if you can justify the $40 price tag. Next, we're gonna move on to shin guard stuff. So what I have right here are uh, some actual sleeves. These are the Storelli um, Body Shield Leg Sleeves. They have a retail price of $30 US. They're available in white and black. I obviously have the white ones right here. And essentially what they are are shin guard sleeves that go around your shin. It's got a built-in pocket so the shin guard actually can fit inside um, and doesn't necessarily have to have to be in direct contact with the skin of your leg. And if the shin guard you have perhaps does not fit inside of the actual built-in pocket, you can actually wear them as regular sleeves where the shin guard sits directly against your leg and then you just wear the entire sleeve over top. What's cool about this is it's a nice elasticated material so it fits really good but doesn't feel like it's squeezing your shin or anything like that. It's got rubberized texturing at the top and bottom of the elastic bands uh, so it grips your skin really nicely. Again, not uncomfortably but stays in place quite well. And then you have the added benefit of pour on foam padding down the outside of your calves. So you're getting a little bit of extra protection, pretty much no extra bulk that you're gonna be able to feel or see while wearing these things plus they stay in place and hold your shin guards in place really really well because of the sleeve not having a bottom with the pocket um, and it not moving around it eliminates the need for tape which is a really big thing for me so really great product in terms of just holding your shin guards in place the best sleeves for that particular uh, kind of performance feature that I've personally ever used plus you get the extra padding so for the $30 price tag you're gonna spend that much easily on tape per year so something like that is definitely worth a look if you normally tape up your shin guards. Next, we of course have shin guards. These are basically the same shin guards I've been using for well over a year now. These are the C6 Agility Carbon Fiber Shin Guards. In my opinion, the best of the best as far as shin guards go. They retail for $135, so they certainly aren't cheap, but they truly are incredible in terms of what they provide. They're made from super high quality carbon fiber, thinner than a penny, um, but rock solid. Um, and the padding on the back is also really, really nice. They fit extremely well. They're available in small, medium, and large, as well as two kind of form factors. So you can get a smaller version or a longer version, depending on what your preferences are. I personally prefer the smaller version, but um, they're super durable. They provide awesome protection. They're as light as can be. And like I said, they really are the best of the best in every single category. So if you're looking for the last pair of shin guards you'll ever need to buy, C6 Agility, $135. I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but they truly are worth every single penny in my opinion. Of course, if you're gonna be playing soccer, you need a ball as well. So what I use mostly this month, mainly because it's the newest ball and I think it's pretty cool looking, is the high-vis variation of the Nike Ordem 3. This one happens to be the Serie A model um, with, of course, the Italian League badging right there. Orange, uh, yellow, and purple in color. Very, very bright. Definitely stands out. This is one of those soccer balls that you bring to the field and people are 
asking what the heck is that thing just because of how bright it actually is. Um, so that's great in terms of being able to see the ball. The performance is really good as well. It's the Ordem 3 official match ball, $150 price tag, which again is very pricey, but uh, the quality is definitely there. And that's the case for any match ball, Nike, Adidas, Puma, whatever brand it may be. You really get what you pay for when it comes to soccer balls in terms of best of the best when it comes to performance, durability, and just general feel. So if you're looking for a really cool, um, very brightly colored match ball, for $150, the new high-vis Ordem 3s are definitely worth your consideration. So move that over to the side. Next, we actually have a pair of trainer slash indoor shoes. It's getting colder, so uh, training outside and training on hard concrete is becoming more and more common, as well as just being indoors in general. Uh, so these are the uh, Nike Magista X Finale Indoors. Um, it's technically below the Magista X Proximo, which of course is the flying it mid-cut variation of the Magista X line. These guys retail for $100 US. So again, they're not the most expensive in the Magista X lineup, but I really like it because you do get, of course, the high end bottom with the Lunar Lawn cushioning system, but you also get what is kind of similar to the Magista Opera Opus Techcraft variation in that it has a synthetic underlay, and then of course, a leather overlay on the upper itself. So you get good protection, uh, not good protection, good cushion on the ball, uh, good cushion underfoot, and it's just a nice, comfortable shoe to wear in general. Really big fan of these trainers. For those that were fans of the Lunar Gato series, this is kind of the unofficial replacement. So if you're looking for something that is going to be most similar to those, this is definitely one of those shoes that I would strongly consider. Plus I think they look pretty good, nothing too crazy, fairly simple as far as the design is concerned. So can't complain too much about that. And then as far as outdoor shoes go, I ended up picking two to put in the bag this month. Uh, these are the uh, Under Armour Speedform CRMs in the camo colorway. Really big fan of this colorway. And this particular colorway introduces a different variation for the upper itself, where it's a little bit softer than the launch colors were, um, which I personally prefer. They feel really good, moves more naturally with your foot. And it's just a really unusual shoe in terms of how it fits and how it's designed. If you've missed any of my videos on the Speedform CRM, I strongly recommend going ahead and checking them out because it's got this really unique kind of internal one piece construction where there's no insole. The whole lining and insole is kind of all in one. It just makes for a very, very unique feel with the shoe on your foot. I don't want to call it a sock like fit because uh, it definitely doesn't feel like the fly knit models or the prime knit models from uh, Nike or Adidas but it does have its own unique feel that really only this shoe provides. So again, really, really awesome shoe. Under Armour, super underrated brand. But uh, like I said, if you're looking for something different, high end, and something that's gonna perform the part that isn't from any of the big three brands, uh, the Under Armour Speedform CRM is a really, really good choice. And then finally, we have these guys right here, which some may view as a boring pick, but I really, really like these things. These are the Made in Japan Mizuno Morelia 2s. This is the 30th anniversary uh, edition, which is why it has this very interesting kind of bright blue shiny color scheme with the white and the red accent. Very comfortable shoe, made in Japan quality as far as leather is, con is concerned. Some of the best of the best that money can buy, right on par with the Copa, if not better, some would argue. Super comfortable right out of the box. Um, and just a no-nonsense, really, really nice shoe. They're also under eight ounces, about seven and a half ounces in a nine US, making them one of the lightest high quality leather shoes that in my opinion are actually worth having. There's a lot of kind of leather speed boots out there that aren't necessarily bad, but aren't necessarily as good as slightly heavier leather shoes are. But this, you're kind of getting all of that in one, um, which like I said, just makes it a very, very attractive option if you're on the market for kind of more traditional styling, more traditional feel with the soft kangaroo leather upper, but also a shoe that doesn't necessarily lack modern innovation in terms of being very, very heavy because these are surprisingly lightweight. So that's pretty much it in terms of the what's in my soccer bag video for October 2015. Again, if you guys are interested in any of the products that you saw in today's video, be sure to check out the um, what's in my soccer bag page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find buy it now links for all of these items, along with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick them up 
below their normal retail prices. So again, if you're interested in anything you saw in the video, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding any of these items, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. Uh, if you enjoyed this series, want to continue seeing it happen on a monthly basis, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, thanks for watching.